Now, if there's one central insight which is going to help you with your half guard passing game, it's this. There's a certain way of positioning your knee from chest to chest positions, which creates a wedging effect around your opponent's hips and shuts down its movement from bottom position. If you can combine this with control of your head so that the head is wedged by your arms and your opponent's hips are wedged by your knees, you're going to pass a lot of people's guards from half guard. Let's have a look at this. We know that when we're in the chest to chest position, we want some method of wedging the upper body. It might be with a cross face. It might be with our training partner's gi. It might be with my head position or double underhooks. However you choose to do it, you want to put some kind of strong set of wedges with your upper body around his head and shoulders. Now, that's one thing, taking care of the head and shoulders. The other thing we want to do is we want to use our knee, once we've freed it, and put it on the floor in either this great passing position, where my knee touches the man, when my training partner goes to move his hips around now, there's a lot of pressure controlling him. When we combine this with upper body control, the only thing he can hold on to is my ankle. And when he goes to move around, my knee wedges the hip, and my upper body grips wedge the head and shoulders. This makes it so easy to just perform the final act of freeing the ankle and passing. So that's one kind of knee wedge that we work with. The other occurs on the other side. This is in situations where I move across my training partner's body, I free my knee, and I wedge my knee on the floor on the other side. So it's a position almost like we're mounted, except for the fact that my ankle is trapped. And this too forms a strong wedge around my opponent's body. Once again, my upper body wedges the head and shoulders, and my knee wedges the hips. So when Mateus goes to move around, his body is well controlled. And again, all I have to do at this point is free my ankle, which is not a particularly difficult thing to achieve using the methods we'll be looking at. So if there's one piece of general advice that I'm going to give you in the chest to chest position, it's this. Put wedges around your opponent's head and shoulders and then put your knee either on the far side, right here in the pocket of his hip on the floor, or on the far side here outside the hip, almost like you mounted. So it's either inside position on the near hip or outside position outside the far hip. If you can wedge your opponent's head and shoulders with your arms and head position and put your knee in either one of those positions on the floor, you're going to have a lot of success passing half guard. So once again, we start off in a half guard type situation. From here, I walk across the body, free my knee, and put my knee on the floor. Now when Mateus goes to move around, it's a very difficult thing. And it's very easy for us in situations like this to get our legs free and, and uh, move into top position. Conversely, if we manage to free our knee and put our knee here on the floor, now you have control of the head and shoulders and you've wedged the hips when he goes to move around, it's going to be a very difficult thing. And as a result, we can simply free our foot and end up with a beautiful pass. So my target, whenever I get chest to chest position, is almost always the same. Create strong wedges around the head and shoulders, and then get your knee into one of those two great positions, either inside at the hip or outside on the far hip. And I'll say it again, if you can get to those positions, you're going to find it very easy to extract your ankle and go into a dominant pin and score your points.